Okay, so let's dive right in. Imagine, just picture this, you're trying to count thousands upon thousands of sea cucumbers scattered across a coral reef. Right. Sounds like a recipe for a massive headache, doesn't it? It does. Well, some really smart researchers over in Australia, they decided to tackle this very problem. It's more than just counting, though, right? Yeah. you got to think about it. Sea cucumbers, they're like the unsung heroes of the reef. They're absolutely vital to keeping that entire ecosystem balanced, the natural recyclers. Oh, interesting. Yeah, essential for nutrient breakdown, hmm. you know, keeping the sediment healthy. Right, yeah, the cleanup crew. Exactly. But here's the thing. The traditional way of doing these surveys, sending divers down, incredibly valuable, but so time-consuming. Yeah. And limited in how much area you can actually cover. Mm. So these researchers thought, why not take to the skies? They decided to bring in drones to photograph this massive, massive stretch of the reef. Oh, wow. That's a way to get around it. Yeah. Capturing way more data than any human diver ever could. And this is where it gets really cool. Instead of having, you know, a team of people going through all of these photos, painstakingly trying to identify, they thought, let's train a deep learning algorithm to do it for us. Oh, wow. So they use this algorithm called YOLO3. YOLO3. Catchy name. It is. Stands for You Only Look Once. And it basically gives computers this superpower to recognize objects in images. Oh, OK. It's like, imagine you're trying to find a specific book in a massive library. Mm. YOLO 3 is like that super efficient librarian who's like, yeah, I know exactly where that is. Right. They can put their finger on it right away. Pinpoint it in seconds. Amazing. And what's really fascinating is how efficient it is. The researchers were able to get a really, really good detection rate by training the algorithm with just 10 drone images. 10. 10 images. That's incredible. It really highlights how AI is just revolutionizing the way that we're approaching data collection in conservation. Wow. It's not just about efficiency either. What's amazing is we can actually uncover hidden ecological patterns with this. Oh, how so? You're right. It's not just about, oh, there's a sea cucumber, there's a sea cucumber. It's about understanding their behavior. Right. The study found that they're not just randomly scattered all over the reef they actually seem to cluster in specific areas. Mm. And it's likely related to the type of sediment on the seafloor. Yeah. It's like these little guys, they have their preferred neighborhoods, and AI is helping us figure out, well, what's their social map actually look like? That's so cool. So we've seen how AI can help us understand these tiny creatures in a whole new way. Right. But what happens when we need to monitor something a bit larger, something maybe a little more elusive? Yeah. Well, that's where our next study takes us. We're going into the realm of giant clams. Oh, wow. Get ready, because this is where things get really, really interesting. Giant clams, huh? Now we're talking, these creatures can grow to be over a meter long. Yeah, they're really something. That's a serious mollusk. They really are impressive. And this study also takes place on the Great Barrier Reef. Giant clams are super important there. They're key to keeping that whole reef system healthy and balanced. Right, I can imagine. But just like with the sea cucumbers we were talking about before, you know, keeping tabs on these gentle giants, it's not easy, especially using those traditional methods, sending divers down. Yeah, I was just thinking about that, trying to survey these giant clams. It's yeah. got to be like finding a needle in a haystack. It really is. It takes forever. And it's tough to cover enough ground to really get a good idea of what the population looks like. Right. So that's where this study is really interesting. They took a different approach. They used drones just like in the sea cucumber study. Okay. But they took it up a notch. They combined it. So they use YOLA 5, you know, kind of like a newer, shinier version of that object detection algorithm we were talking about. Right. But they also used this really neat tool called SAI. SAI. Now, that's a new one. What is that? SAA. It stands for Slicing Aided Hyperinference. Okay. Catchier than I expected. Right. But it sounds complicated, but it's actually pretty straightforward. So picture this. Okay. You've got this huge, crazy, detailed picture from the drone of the reef, right? Right. It's massive. It'd be like trying to study like the entire surface of a football field, yeah. but you've only got this tiny little magnifying glass. Oh, wow, yeah. Way too much to process at once. So you do what anyone would do. You break it down into smaller chunks. Right. Like cutting that football field into smaller squares. Makes sense. But here's the catch. What if... A giant clam happens to be right on the line between two of those pieces, right? Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. You could easily count it twice, yeah. and suddenly your count is all messed up. Right, yeah, you've thrown the numbers off. Exactly. And that, my friend, is where SHI swoops in to save the day. Okay. 
So it's this clever way to analyze these huge detailed pictures, yeah. but avoid that whole double counting trap. Mm -hmm. So SAHI, it lets the algorithm see the bigger picture, even if it's just looking at one little section at a time. Interesting. So it's not getting stuck in the weeds. Exactly. Exactly. So fascinating. You know, so huh? you can realize, oh, that's the same clam. I've already counted it. Oh, very cool. And get this. They were able to create with this combination of drones and Yolov 5 and anti high these incredibly detailed maps of giant clam density. <sighs> they actually found that in some spots, there were up to seven giant clams per square meter. Seven clams in a space that small. That's incredible. That's amazing. That kind of data, that level of detail, you can't get that with just divers. That's got to be so important for actually making conservation decisions. It's huge. You're absolutely right, because that level of detail, it lets scientists track those clam populations over time. And that's how we can really figure out, okay, how is climate change affecting things? What about pollution, even tourism? Right. You can see the impact. Exactly. So we've gone from counting sea cucumbers to mapping out giant clams, and it seems like AI, drones, this technology, it's really changing how we learn about and protect our planet. It really is. But there's always another layer, right? I mean, it can't all be smooth sailing in this world of high-tech conservation, right? Yeah, it's easy to get caught up in the, whoa, look at all this amazing tech. But like with anything new, we've got to look past the shiny exterior. Think about the bigger picture here. I mean, are there any downsides to using AI and drones for conservation? Anything we should be cautious about? Absolutely. You're spot on. You know, these studies are super exciting. They show us what's possible, but they also come with a few warnings. Like one study mentioned that their algorithm, it was crazy accurate on the reefs it was trained on. Right. But when they tried it out on data from other reefs, not so much. Really? It's like imagine teaching a self-driving car to navigate in New York City. It might be a pro at handling Times Square, all the craziness. Right. But those winding streets of San Francisco, it might run into some trouble. Oh, that makes sense. Right. Yeah. AI models, especially when we're talking about image recognition, they're usually trained on really specific data. So if that data doesn't show the full picture, like different types of reefs, different lighting, water clarity, that kind of thing, the algorithm's not going to be as accurate. So we could end up with a skewed idea of how healthy an ecosystem really is. Exactly. Just because the AI learned on a different kind of reef. Precisely. And that's why it's so crucial that we're really, really rigorously testing these models. Scientists are working on ways to make them more adaptable, but it's a challenge for sure. It sounds like it. So... As much as AI and drones are changing the game, we can't forget about human expertise. 100%. We can't just blindly trust the machines. We need that critical thinking to make sure the data we're getting is accurate. Absolutely. It's all about that collaboration. Yeah. Humans and technology working together, that's how we're really going to make a difference for the planet. I love that. Well, we've covered a lot of ground today, from those tiny sea cucumbers working hard on the ocean floor to those giant clams, those gentle giants of the Great Barrier Reef. It's been quite a journey. It has, and we even dove into the world of deep learning, all those complex algorithms working behind the scenes. The unsung heroes of data analysis. That's right, so as you go about your day, think about this. What other amazing things could we do with this technology? How else can we use these tools to understand and protect the natural world? Keep those questions in mind, and until next time, happy exploring. <laughs>